Uh, welcome back to another episode with Bantering with Bernardato. You know, we've done almost a dozen videos and webinars in the last few months on safety needs to protect your business and practice from COVID in your facility. But what happens when COVID gets into your facility? Uh, to address these issues, we have a, a mini series we've put together for y'all, um, and we're calling it uh, COVID Questions from Our Clients. So today's question is, Michael? Today's question, Renee, is what do I do if an employee tests positive for COVID-19? That is a great question and one that is coming up more and more frequently right now uh, as the numbers start to surge th throughout the states. So there's a number of steps that you'll want to take if you have an employee who tests positive for COVID-19. Number one, and most importantly, right, is to send that employee home immediately. Make sure that they are quarantining themselves and following all CDC guidelines for when it's safe for them to return to work, whether that be a test-based or a symptom-based uh, procedure. The next thing you want to do is consider protecting your other employees who are still at the workplace. And we like to advise clients to use what we call the 615-48 rule. So any employee that's been within six feet of that infected employee for 15 minutes or more and within the last 48 hours before you discover that employee was infected, those are your, your first in line employees that you need to contact, make sure they're aware that there has been a potential exposure to the virus by another employee. Of course, without uh, without identifying that employee by name uh, for HIPAA protection, unless that employee has given you permission or that employee has, has notified employees themselves. Um, the next thing to do is notify your patients or your customers that that employee had contact with. You may also have state reporting requirements depending on what state you're in and the spread uh, of that exposure. So if you're, you have more than one employee infected, uh, some states have actual minimums or uh, numbers that you have to report based on how many people have potentially been exposed. Um, the next, of course, is just making sure that you can either stay open after sanitizing and disinfecting the entire office, or if you do need to close for a temporary amount of time to make sure that you're um, you know, disinfecting, sanitizing, that other employees have time to go take a test if they want to. Uh, you want to keep in mind that if you're going to mandate that all employees get tested because of this exposure, you as the employer do need to actually pay for the test itself and then the time that employee spent to go get tested. Um, and then really, you know, the last piece of this is, is what do you do with the employee or employees that are now uh, out of the office, right? And this can be a variety um, of answers based on uh, that employee itself and you, you as the employer, but does that employee qualify for any type of paid leave under FMLA or the Family First Coronavirus Act? If not, um, if you fall into one of those exceptions as either a healthcare worker or uh, you know, less than 50 employees and you can meet that hardship requirement, then you want to consider does that employee have PTO that they've accrued that they can use? Maybe you give them some unpaid uh, time off if they don't have it accrued. So there's a lot of different considerations, but number one and you know, most importantly is making sure that you as the employer are doing everything you can to protect your workforce and keep your employees safe. I um, thank you again for joining us in this episode. And as, as you can see, there's a lot that happens with COVID when it, it unfortunately might get into your uh, office or to your, um, your medical practice. So hopefully this gives you some guidelines and guidance as to how to respond. And we look forward to uh, hopefully uh, seeing you at the next episode. So thanks again for joining us.